Haditha, who was a Yahudi woman, she sent some fried mutton to Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to eat. Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of his Sahaba consumed. And one of his Sahabi, Bara bin Ma'rur radiallahu anhu, died as a result. It was poisoned mutton. That fried mutton was poisoned. She tried to kill Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was affected. He took a morsel and spat it out. But the effects of that morsel was such that it affected the mouth of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it affected his health. And when he died three years later, it was due to this sickness. Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgave her. If he wanted to, he could have harmed her. He could have done something back. But he forgave her. Wahshi bin Harab, the Sahabi radiallahu anhu who later embraced Islam, killed the most beloved brother of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, who was Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's close companion. In fact, they were foster brothers as well. They were both were fostered by the same woman. In the battle of Uhud, Wahshi hid. He conspired against Hamza because he was told by Jubair bin Mut'im and Hind that if you kill Hamza because he was good with despair, then you will be set free. That was the incentive. So Wahshi bin Harb, he hid. And when he saw an opportunity, he said, I could never come face to face with Hamza. He would murder me. So I waited until I saw the ideal opportunity when Hamza anhu was vulnerable. When he was fighting somebody else, I went from behind and I stabbed him with a dagger, with a spear, and I ripped his entire body into pieces. And Rasul was so saddened by the incident of Hamza anhu's shahada and martyrdom. So saddened. When Wahshi became Muslim, years later, he was embarrassed to come in front of Nabi Karim Wasallam because of this. But Rasul forgave him. Because no personal grudge was in the, any bone of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No revenge or retaliation for anything personal. In the battle of Dhatul Riqat, when Muslims were returning, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was taking a siesta and he was resting under a tree and he just hung his sword on the tree and a Bedouin came and grabbed the sword and he came and he leapt upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Who will save you now? Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah with power. So we say Allah. It doesn't have it doesn't shake anybody's hearts. Allah with power and faith and conviction. When he said Allah, he shook and trembled and the sword dropped. Nabi Karim Sallallahu picked the sword and said, Who will save you now? But Rasulullah didn't do anything to him. He became a Muslim. He took the shahada and he came into Islam. Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu chased the Muhajireen to Abyssinia to stop them so they can be extradited from Abyssinia and he gave and he, he, he pleaded with Habq and Najashi and Jafar gave that landmark speech and Muslims were allowed to stay but when he became Muslim Amr ibn al-As everything was forgiven Khalid bin Walid Al-Islam yahdi ma kana qablahu Islam obliterates the past sins Khalid bin Walid in the battle of Uhud killed approximately 70 Sahaba he was leading the Mushrikeen but when he became a Muslim in Fatr Makkah, everything was forgiven. Al Islam, Yahdimu Makana Kablahu. Wal Hajj, Yahdimu Makana Kablahu. This is the example we see in the Sunnah of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sil man qata'aka, wa'fu amman zalamaka, wa ahsin man asa'a ilayk. Forgive the one who oppresses you and be good to the one who is bad to you. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal ladina sabaru tira'a wajhi rabbihim, wa aqamu salah. وأنفقوا مما رزقناهم سرا وعلانية ويدرؤون بالحسنة السيئة أولئك لهم عقبة الدار. الله says those who are patient because of their Lord to gain the reward from their Lord for the pleasure of their Lord and establish prayers and they spend from the sustenance we have provided them day and night in seclusion and openly and they repel evilness with good. This is my point. Allah says أولئك لهم عقبة الدار for them they will be the best of abodes in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, repel the evil with that which is better. I know what they are saying, Allah says. We know what they are saying. Allah is saying, ignore it. Be the better person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Allah says, if somebody is evil to you, the retribution of evil is with evil itself. You have that right. But if you forgive them, and if you reconcile, then your ajr is with Allah. And that ajr is far more purifying. That ajr is far more satisfying than the evil. 
or the, the retaliation or the revenge you would have taken in person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, how should you deal with these bullies? How should you deal with criticism? Allah says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ If it was not for the mercy of Allah, you would never have been, or Allah says, it was only through the mercy of Allah you were soft with them. If you had been harsh and hard-hearted, these people would have dispersed from your gathering. Allah says, فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ Forgive them. وَاسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُمْ Seek Allah's forgiveness for them. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah says, خُذِ الْعَفْءُ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفُ وَعَبِدْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْزَغُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ كَانَ لِلْإِنسَانِ عَدُوَ مُبِينَ Allah says, when there is this sort of problem amongst two people, one is criticizing, bullying, hating upon you. Allah says, tell my servants, say that which is better. Because in, in, shaitan is trying to cause this animosity between them. And the shaitan is an open enemy for man. And inshallah, I'm going to end here. What we learned from this very brief talk is how Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi dealt with criticism, how Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi dealt with people hating upon him, harming him, how he had a nature of forgiving people, and how he had a nature of showing goodness to people. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala give us all tawfiq to understand this. In this day and age, we get so much. I was I was saying earlier that you know evilness it has self, an element of self destruction. I mean, people who drew cartoons about Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look, what, look what's happening today, economy today. Right? I was mentioning to you about the destruct, self destruction of evil. So people who drew Cartoons of Nabi Akhari Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Look at the state of the economy today There's something to think about May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us tawfiq Alhamdulillah 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 Imam Yaseen has a lot of programs that go on at Plano every week So if you live in that area, if you live north, way north of Richardson Go ahead and find out about the, uh, the, pro the programs that the Plano Masjid has As well as us as well uh, a funny story actually about this kind of incident. So my sister, she wears a uh, hijab and jilbab and she was walking one day um, in, in a, a nice summer day in Chicago, which summer in Chicago is about two weeks long uh, before the winter comes. For those of you who live there, you know. And so we were walking and there was like an ice cream shop. You guys know what Dairy Queen is? Do we have Dairy Queen here? Really? SubhanAllah, I can become the Dairy King. Okay, so, so we were walking, right? And it's like an outdoor type of uh, thing. You know, it's a very old school type, type place. So you go and you place your order. You don't sit down inside. It's a, it's a stand. And one guy, he's driving by. Uh, the, <laughs> and my sister's wearing jilbab and, and uh, hijab. And that's when I used to be a little bit weird. I used to wear stilb everywhere. Um, she, uh, this one guy drives by and he goes, go back to Islam. And my sister was like, subhanAllah, what a nice reminder. I should go back to Islam, you know, I should stop sinning, I should, you know, <laughs> it's funny because I guess Islam's a country in this guy's head. Okay, so if you look at it, just kind of like the, the philosophy or the, the culture of forgiveness and kind of like looking at everything very optimistically, like Sheikh Yassin said, it really changes your perspective on how you deal with people and how you deal with ignorance, which is what we're being bombarded with today. Our next speaker is a fan favorite of INT and Richardson, uh, Hafiz Wassam Sharif, everyone knows you know who he is, everyone knows what his voice sounds like, everyone's seen how nice his hair is. Uh, but his message, inshallah, is always, his message, alhamdulillah, and inshallah, has been, will be, and will always be better than his hairdo. Uh, and so without further ado, I want to welcome a good friend and brother, and Sheikh Hafa Wasam Sharif. This is for the screen. We have about 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salamu ala rasulihi nabiyil kareem. All praise and thanks are due to Allah. Friends, I'm going to cut to the chase. I've got 20 minutes. So, a lot of praise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send our peace and blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this evening something more than a nice talk. I mean, really, right off the bat, I was in the same boat as Mufti Yaseen. I was very lost on the concept of the title. I was very lost on this concept of 
loving the haters and brushing the shoulders off. And I can only imagine what the uncles were thinking as they read this, but that's okay, alhamdulillah. So what I'd like to do is make this section as interactive as possible because I don't need to say much after uh, Mulana's talk. It was to the point and can someone quickly summarize in one nutshell. The talk is about uh, dealing with bullies. Can someone summarize? Just give me a quick summary. I got 20 minutes, don't waste my time. Sisters. Nutshell, the whole talk basically said what? How to deal with criticism. How, how to deal with criticism. And who dealt with criticism the best? Prophet Wasallam. The lady carrying his groceries. Then the people. A guy tried to stab him. Okay, that I thought was pretty zany. But then, a guy, if you meet a guy who does magic on you, A, ask him how he did the magic. Because that's pretty interesting. I don't know how to do magic. And B, you, you take that guy to town. Right? If someone looks at us disrespectfully, if someone mentions our... Hijabs don't match our socks, right? We talked about this last time. Then we get all like, you know, this gets on like Donkey Kong. So in this case, in a nutshell, the Mulana gave us the talk that forgiveness was in the character of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How do you deal with a bully? Surah Bani, we, we read this in several occasions. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا and when the jahil, ignorant person says, Oh, Bin Laden's cousin, or says something retarded, then you look at him and say, Qalu salam. Now, that is all fine and dandy, but now we want to get into how can we take that to our applicable lives. And I don't know how many people are going to leave me out to dry on this, but I'd like to see a group of people raise their hands. If you could, I was sitting back there listening to Shif, saying, and raise your hand if you were with me. Well, that was the Prophet wasallam. And I ain't no prophet. How many people were with me? How many people were like, well, that's not, right, Bilal? My whole thing was, that was his character. That's why he was a prophet. You, know, you, you get the point? So what I want to do is I want you to help me construct my talk. And this is going to be the most important. Let's try to find other awliya or other anbiya, in this case, prophets in the Quran that were bullied. And then let's see who was bullied the most. So if you don't mind, we have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now why was he bullied? What was his main, what was the main message? Main message of Islam, friends. One God, bada bing, there you go. One God, there's only one God. All the idols that you guys, the American idols and all of the other idols that you worship, they're all not real. And the only real thing is one God. And by the way, I just happen to be the last prophet of Allah. Fair enough. Could you bully that? Yeah, I guess you could. You could bully that. But at the end of the day, he had Qur'an. So it's kind of hard to really bully that. What did they do? They persecuted him. They physically attacked him. And I want to make it clear. I'm not discussing bullying when someone physically attacks you. If someone calls you, you look like a mummy or a ninja or whatever. That's bullying. I want to start my talk out by very clearly saying, if someone physically abuses you, friends, they lay a hand on you or they interact with you in an uncomfortable way, you're going to make that clear to your closest adult. I don't like the way that that teacher patted me on the back. Someone touched me. Someone got physically made contact. That's not what I'm talking about. If that happens, you're going to contact someone and you're going to let them know what happened. So let's go on. Can you give me another prophet that you think was bullied? Quickly. Yusuf, okay. Yusuf alayhi salam, very good. Yusuf alayhi salam was jailed because of a scandal. So at the end of the day, he could be proved right or he could have been proved wrong. So the people who bullied him, there was a 50-50 chance, right? He, they got into the scandal, remember? And he said, He said, no, no, I ain't about this. I ain't about this scandal. I'm not going to be on the front page of, you know, the uh, Inquirer magazine, Yusuf alayhi salam. Did he do this? Did he not? I'm not going to be there. Give me another prophet, sisters. Another prophet who was bullied. Pardon? Ibrahim alayhi salam. I was waiting for someone to say this. Quite frankly though, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he did some bullying of his own himself, right? He walked up into that temple. He was like, look at this bad boy. So he was not the, the weak and oppressed. He told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam in Jannah, he goes, the best time on earth. This is smack talk. He told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. he said the best time on earth was when? What did he say the best time on earth was? Sitting in the fire. Okay, so he, I wouldn't really say that he was the most uh, bullied. 
They tried to, but they failed. Someone else come up with a profit.